Now we're going to uh, look at the draw data set plugin inside AFNI. And I'm going to start it in the AFNI data 6 AFNI directory. So in AFNI data 6, AFNI directory, uh, just type AFNI. And I'm going to switch to Talarac View just to show you some other features. You can do this in the native space too. Um, and there's a couple ways to get to the, the draw data set plugin. Uh, and one is to just right click on any image viewer and select draw ROI plugin. That's one way. The other way is to go to define data mode and select plugins. And there you have draw data set. So that's the second way. I'll do that. Okay. With the draw data set menu open, uh, you kind of go through this sequentially from the top. It says no data set. Uh, look at these options. So here we're going to make a copy of a data set. And uh, we're going to use a zeroed out copy. And we're going to show it in the overlay. And rather than as is, let's save it in byte format. Okay, and I accidentally clicked on that, so to show that clearly. Choose data set for copying. So let's choose our data set, and we'll choose a NAT plus Talarac as our, as our data set. Okay, and what this does is it makes a blank copy of that data set. What's a blank copy? That's just a copy that's just zero everywhere. So we're just getting the grid of our data set. And we're going to draw over that same data set. And we're going to draw in the overlay. Could draw in the underlay, uh, but almost no one ever does that. So, so let's just draw in the overlay. OK, and we can draw in lots of different ways. And we have to first choose a drawing color. This is the index that we're going to put into our data set. So we're going to pick a, an, an intensity uh, that we're going to draw with. And we're going to put a value of 1 here. And we can call it something. So let's say ROI 1. You can call it whatever you like. And we're going to choose a drawing color. And here the drawing color is by default set to yellow. You could choose other colors if you like. Depends on what you're looking at and how clear that is. Um, and the, by default, you can look. Uh, it has the mode is filled curve. You can choose a variety of other methods. We'll talk about just a couple of these, and you can play around with, with other ones on your own. OK, so let's go over to any window. And if you click, nothing happens. You just can choose the area that you, you want to start drawing. And uh, if you use the middle button, you can start to draw with your middle button. And there, I've drawn something. And if I don't, OK, so it's a little bit difficult to see. Maybe I'll change my, I'll, I'll, I didn't like what I did, so I will undo it down here on the lower left. So select undo. Uh, you can also redo. And uh, I'll draw with a different color. This is just the drawing color. It's just temporary color, just so I can see the pen a little bit better. Um, so I can draw. Now, hey, I'm doing this very quickly and roughly. Uh, if you're drawing a lot of regions, um, I have some recommendations. So one thing that you may want to do is, is zoom in more to the area that you're looking at. Another thing is you may want a uh, stylus for drawing. If you have a touch screen, you can draw with a stylus. This is, this is a handy way to, to make this a lot faster. Um, uh, an even better touch screen are things like the Wacom uh, Cintiq, which is a, a nice big large screen. It's used by Pixar and Disney for doing their animation. You can draw regions with it too, and that works great. Uh, and it will cut your time significantly for, for most people. Um, so a lot of these, these macaque and marmoset atlases that were drawn, uh, often with AFNI, just, uh, it's, it's a, 
fairly meticulous process, and you can you can you want to save as much time as you can. Okay, so uh, we are, so if you're using one of these things like a stylus or the Wacom Cintiq, or you just want to use the left button, you can select the pen button over here. And when you select the pen button, the cursor changes to something that looks a little like a pen, and uh, you can draw with a pen using the left button. I prefer this because I'm more used to, to dragging with left, the left, left mouse button anyway, but uh, you, you have your choice. Okay, so I've drawn one region. It's, they're kind of in two separate pieces here. I can go to another region and draw my second ROI. Uh, and here I'll, uh, and these are drawn one slice at a time, right? So um, if I, so here, let me choose a different drawing method instead of a, uh, of this, this uh, kind of polygon that I've been drawing with, this, this uh, filled curve, I'm gonna draw with a 3D sphere. So a 3D sphere is something like a 3D paintbrush. I'm drawing in three dimensions with a ball. And this ball has a value of two everywhere I click it. Uh, so let's see, and there's a four millimeter radius. Let's see what that looks like. And I've got pen set so I can use the left mouse button. So that's what happens when you use the ball. So, but you'll see if I go through the slices, I'm drawing on the coronal slice. You can see as it goes away, the ball gets smaller. And uh, we can also zoom in and see what that looks like across the other slices. So you can see it's, we've drawn something uh, with those balls in a row. Uh, so you have a different kind of effect. And so drawing with, with, with uh, 3D spheres is a fast way to cover a lot of distance. Uh, if, and uh, so it can be really useful for, for making uh, a big rough mask. You can go back and fine tune it by erasing parts of it. So how would you erase an ROI? Does anyone have any, any idea? Yes? Set it to zero, that's right. So we can start drawing with zero. So if I set this to zero, then I can go back and maybe I wanna use a smaller ball. Uh, maybe let's say I'll enter in one. Having a problem clicking that. Okay, one. Okay, now I can go back and and you see I've, I've, I'm drawing now with the, the zero and zeroing out my data. So that's one way to, to erase. You can also use the uh, points mode. Uh, so this will give you one voxel at a time and uh, erase with that. Oh, pen and pan are not compatible, so if you want to pan, you have to turn off pen. I'm not sure why that is, but that's, that's why we, what we've got. Um, and it's useful to zoom and pan to the area that, where you want to draw, so it'll be easier to see everything, and to work with a large area, too. Okay, uh, if you want to only draw every few slices, you can use this linear fill-in. Uh, if you uh, want to use atlas regions, you can do that here. Um, so you can choose your atlas, uh, you know, choose one that's in the space of your, of your data set. So I'm gonna choose uh, one of the Desai atlases here. And there's a long list. Um, for anywhere there's a long list, almost everywhere there's a long list in AFNI, you can right click just to the left of it and see the list as a uh, window that you can scroll through. Let's say uh, I'll do that. And then I can load that, I can either overwrite or fill in what hasn't been drawn in. 
and uh, before. And so, so here, let's see where that. Oh, forgot. This has to be done in the the color here. Of course, I don't know exactly where that is. Yeah, there. Well, it's somewhere in there. To find the uh, part of the ancilla where I put that. There it is. Okay, so so you can bring in atlas regions into your your uh, your data set that way. And once you you've got your set of regions, uh, an atlas can have hundreds of regions, and uh, uh, this can take many, many months of work. And, uh, and as you go, you should save it. And, sa and the Save As button is uh, down here. So Save As. These are, you know, call it what you like. And then save that. And then you can convert that into an, af into an atlas also. So um, that's how you create regions. Any questions about how to use Draw Data Set? Now, you don't have to create regions with AFNI also. You can create regions with, with any other package that creates nifty data sets. Just be careful that when it comes in, it's got the right header information, the left and right particularly, uh, and that you know, everything is in just the right place. Uh, the coordinates haven't been shifted over anything. All right. So when you're finished, you just click Done. And you also notice that over here, um, let me turn that off. Of, as you click, the uh, regions show up labeled in, in the uh, overlay panel. And here we're looking at uh, a color scale that's good for looking at regions. It has separate distinct colors for every region. Uh, and you can get to those ROI type of color scales by right clicking on the color bar and selecting choose color scale. When you save this kind of data set, it's saved with an attribute that says show it with an integral color map, you know, just integers, so a color map like this. So here's the, it's shown ROI I32, but we have ones that go up to 256. And there are uh, certainly a lot of other color scales that you can look at. All right. Uh, when you, if you reload, if you want to do the, continue this on, then you wouldn't zero it out. You could just select the data set and keep the data as is. You wouldn't select that zero. You would have, give it a new name, or you would uh, keep the data as is and then you know, continue on the process you know, every day, uh, updating it often. Okay, uh, you can draw any shape you like, hearts included. The, the renderer that's built in, the render plugin that's built into AFNI will show the overlay and will show it as you're drawing. So if you want to see it as you're drawing, you can do that. I'm not sure who did this, but somebody uh, drew some, some name there. So, okay. Uh, okay, so some issues that you have to think about what, when you're dealing with ROIs. Uh, so, we drew on a high resolution data set, uh, our anatomical data set, but we're mostly going to apply it to our much lower resolution, our, our fMRI data, typically much lower. Uh, that's, that's, you know, so instead of one millimeter resolution, we may have two millimeter or three millimeter resolution. And how do we go between those two, two kinds of resolutions? Um, so here is a diagram, a high res to low res, here, when we fill up a low-res voxel with a high-res voxel, it's pretty clear that, that what to do with that, we just keep the same value. But what if it's only halfway filled? Or what if it's only a quarter of the way filled? Then what do we do? So uh, we've got some programs for dealing with that. So one program is called 3D Fractionize. So here, you give it a... Uh, uh, what you're going to. So we're going to low res from our high resolution ROI that we've drawn very meticulously in draw data set. And then we're going to destroy all the details of it by moving it to a low resolution. 
and we're going to say uh, keep it keep the value there if it's half filled. So it's at 0 0.5, clip value of 0 0.5. Keep the value itself. Don't give us the preserve says. Uh, don't give us a, um, uh, a a resampled interpolated value. Give us the value itself. So if we've drawn with a value of four and it's 0.8 filled, we don't want a value of 3.2. We want a value of four. That's what that does. And uh, if you've got multiple regions, it will figure out which one is more or less, and and uh, and you can have a voting which one uh, wins the campaign in that voxel. So here's a little diagram. This voxel is 80% filled. That's more than the 0.5 clipping value. We want to keep that. This one's only 30% filled. We want to, to lose it. This happens often when you're dealing with high resolution uh, structures, structures that are very fine, like uh, uh, and maybe they're diagonal, okay, and and so their voxels don't quite make it to fill up a, a voxel. Maybe they'll only be thirty percent filled. In that case, you you can lose a lot of the shape. So something like the hippocampus uh, or sub sub regions of the hippocampus, these won't fill voxels necessarily, and so you may want to to keep keep those. And so you can use 3D fractionize to, uh, to do that. In general, most people don't really worry about this. And so for, for a lot of the kind of work we do, 3D resample is good enough. This is effectively a 50% cutoff. Uh, and with ROIs, uh, you would use this resampling mode of nearest neighbor. And so that just looks to see what voxel would show up at the center of that that uh, new new grid, and uh, is it uh, uh, at for that ROI? And uh, so, so uh, that's generally what we do: three D resample, three D fractionize is, is much much slower, and uh, and you still have to decide what that cutoff clip value is. Okay, so here's an example: we're going from this this region that we drew here. And then we resample it down to, to this, this resolution here. And uh, so 3D resample is often used for this. So you give it the master data set, you give it the name of the output, the prefix, yeah, you give it the input, which here is called dash inset, and the resampling mode nearest neighbor. Other things you can do with, with ROIs, uh, you can get the, the average at every time point uh, with 3D MassGav. So you've, you've drawn this region, or you've gotten it out of a cluster. You can say, what is the average at each time point uh, on, in this uh, data set? So this is the, the volume registered uh, EPI data set, and, and redirect all the output to this 1D text file that's just numbers. So every, every uh, row is just a, the, the mean across the uh, the ROI. And this is what it looks like. The EPI average data set is just this column of numbers, 1,076 down to 1,084 at the last one. And then we can plot it with 1D plot. This is a, a very uh, commonly used tool in AFNI using, you know, to be able to get the, the averages across your regions. Uh, another thing that, that sometimes people want is 3D mask dump. Uh, they want to find out all the voxel values in a data set um, uh, uh, within an ROI. And so you can do that with this 3D mask dump. You provided the mask, what region to apply it to. So this is func slim plus a ridge, the, uh, the second sub brick, uh, sub brick two. And so that's the, the reliable visual T stat. And so this will all show up in one text file, all the, uh, all the values within that. And people will often ask for this maybe to bring it into MATLAB or into some other kind of an analysis software. Having said that, we do have an AFNI MATLAB toolkit that makes bringing in data sets a little bit easier. Uh, you can extract them. You can bring in the whole data set and extract what you want 
inside MATLAB too. A similar program to 3D MASCAV, it's 3D ROI stats. So 3D MASCAV gives us one region, one mask. Uh, but if you use 3D ROI stats, then you can, it will separately handle each of the ROIs. So if you have an ROI with a value of one, a value of two, and a value of three, it will give you those, those means across each of those separately. And this is what the output looks like. This is for just applied to one single sub bracket. You could also apply it to uh, a whole time series, and it would give you three columns for each of the uh, the means. Another way to to get ROIs is from clusters. Uh, we showed you the clusterized plugin. I think we'll show it, show it to you a couple more times. Um, that's you know one way to to get. Uh, you can take your activation maps, threshold them, cluster them if you like, and, uh, and those will be new ROI data sets. So here's an example. You've seen this. You can get averages across time inside the plugin. And there's a brand new program. Paul Taylor just wrote this. It's just been released into the AFNI source code, 3D Clusterize. This replaces 3D Clust and, and 3D Merge for clusters. Uh, the syntax is, is easier, so it's, it's easier to, to work with. Um, and here's an example of what you would do with it. So 3D Clusterize, you could tell it how many voxels have to be in your cluster. Here I'll say 200 voxels. This is just an example. Okay, uh, and I want a by-sided result. I don't want to mix my positive and negatives. I want positive clusters or negative clusters, but not mixes of positive and negative clusters. And I want those to be between minus 2.0, well, outside of, uh, with a threshold of minus 2.0 and, and, and positive 2.0. So the absolute value is going to be more than 2.0. And I'm going to get the threshold from subbrick 2 and the data from subbrick one. So remember, this is my, in this case, it's the back to the funk slim data set. This is the uh, uh, T stat for the reliable visual stimulus, and this is the beta coefficient, the percent signal change for, for that, that uh, stimulus. And I want to get that, uh, uh, I want to have uh, the clusters are defined by facing neighbors. The, the default, so nearest neighbor uh, uh, mode uh, with, with just voxels that are facing head on. So, um, and the, the input is my Funk Slim data set, and the output is a, a map of your clusters. I call that my clusters. And this is what it looks like on the output. Uh, you get a data set like this with this, uh, this map of the clusters. And you get a report. This is similar to the ones that we've seen for the other kinds of things. Um, we have a, a list of, uh, of the clusters and this, the center of mass. We have the extents of each of the clusters and the, the minimum and maximum in three directions. Uh, we have the mean through that cluster. We have uh, error. And we have the peak values. So a peak value and then the location of those peak values. So all that comes out, it's, uh, it's pretty simple and fast to run. Okay, 3D Merge does something very similar, but the syntax is a lot harder. One thing to note is that uh, uh, because when you, when you use a, uh, a number of voxel cutoff, at, it, you can't just use that arbitrarily across all studies. There have been Studies in the past that say always use some number of voxels, 27 voxels or 3 voxels or 81 voxels. That doesn't really make sense. There has to be some kind of volume associated with it. If you have a higher resolution, you need a different number of voxels than a lower resolution. This seems fairly straightforward, but is not all, has been missed in the past. So. Another way to create uh, ROIs is just to put some spheres down. So you can put spheres at any location you like. If you know that an activation happened here, here, and here in the past, you can use that as your region of interest. And uh, this is uh, an example of how you would put a sphere into a data set. 
It's basically a 3D undump with the dash SRAD option. This tells it to put a 7.5 millimeter sphere at that location. We can take it from some localizer study from another uh, data set and, uh, and, and uh, put the spheres down here. And so this is what it looks like in AFNI. Uh, we can also use where am I? We can use Atlas regions. And so where am I? If you say where am I dash mask Atlas region and you give it the name of the Atlas, uh, whether you want left or right, the right side and the name of the region and then give it the output name. And it, you'll have uh, just that, that part of the atlas as a separate data set. So here, this is similar to the other example with 3D clusters, this is with the, the new 3D clusterize. Take the output of the, uh, the clusterize output and then tell me where these coordinates are in various atlases. Uh, and uh, that does that there. Goes across all the different atlases and tells you what regions those coordinates are in. You can also use, uh, uh, the atlases are available not just with where am I, but in every AFNI command. AFNI data sets can be just the reference to an atlas. So you could say, he, as here, uh, when it asks for the mask data set, you can give it the name of the atlas and the, uh, the side and the region. If you don't care about which side it is, you can just put colon, colon. And that's usually what you do. Most atlases, you would just put colon, colon, and the atlas and the region name. And here's an example with 3D calc. I don't know if we've talked too much about 3D calc, but if you're an AFNI user, you must learn how to use 3D calc. It will be very, very handy for you. So this is an image calculator. Um, and it takes all kinds of any, any data sets as input. And uh, you can output here is a pretty simple example. Here we're going to give it as input the hippocampus from the macro label atlas. And we're going to apply it to our, uh, our FSTAT result. And uh, here we give it an expression to evaluate at every voxel. So the expression says evaluate this A. A is the hippocampus. Is, it, is this A not zero? Is it positive, actually? Is it positive? If it's positive, then this step A converts it to a one, and then we multiply it by the B value. So this is a way to effectively mask the F stat to just the hippocampus. Okay. And this 3D calc takes uh, options from A to Z. And there are some things that are useful that are, you know, we have IJK, XYZ, T, L, uh, maybe, uh, that are, can be used for other things, or they can be used for data sets. So I just want to you know, be aware that, that of two things here, that atlases are available everywhere, and, they're, and 3D Calc, because it's a super important program. Um, Here's another 3D calc uh, command. We have the, uh, we're going to give it as input. The A, A data set will be Telerac daemon amygdala. The B data set will be the macro label amygdala. And let's just take one times one of the Telerac daemons and two, two times the uh, macro label. So if they, this is a way just to compare it, we're going to create a kind of simple binary format for our, our atlases. So here, if it exists in the Talarac daemon, it gets a value of one. If it also exists in, well, if it exists in the macro label, we'll add two. And if it's in both, it will be one plus two, which is usually three. So uh, we'll have three there. So, so uh, if they overlap, they'll, they'll be shown with a value of three, which is shown in red here. So just uh, this also shows us that atlases don't agree with each other, and it shows us how to use 3D calc, and that atlases are available as data sets. Now, someone asked uh, uh, yesterday, the day before, I don't remember, uh, how to go back to the original native space. So 
And that depends. Uh, there, there are a bunch of ways to go back. If you've done, if it got in, if it's in a standard space by an affine transformation, all these methods work and they work pretty similarly. So you can use 3D Alineate, 3D Warp, and 3D Fractionize. This the last one is the slowest, but if you've got multiple ROIs that have to go back into a native space, this will, will has a voting option that, that can help there. So this is here. I don't expect you to memorize this. I, I don't have it memorized either, so, uh, but it just as a reference. If you've gone to uh, uh, standard space through a nonlinear transformation, uh, here's an example of how to go back. Well, here's how, how you might have gotten there with a combination of add auto telerac and auto warp, or just auto warp, you could do it that way. And 3D n warp apply is what you would use to go backwards. And you give it these parameters. So here it's going to invert your translation, your affine transformation, and your nonlinear warp, and put put the data back into the native space. Now remember, if you're working with ROIs, you probably want to use a nearest neighbor interpolation because you don't want fractions of an ROI. You just want the value itself. But otherwise, uh, you can use uh, other kinds of interpolations like linear, cubic, or W sync, windowed sync five, or something like that. Uh, some other ways that can do the, the sim similar things, I, 3D N warp apply is, uh, is probably the most robust for, for this. Uh, this was a controversy several years ago that there was something, you know, <laughs> the problem of circula circularity, and that uh, people were, were supposedly double dipping. They were taking their, their regions and then taking parts of their regions uh, and saying, look how correlated everything is. And these are, these are really useful results. And uh, uh, that was uh, called what uh, uh, voodoo, uh, voodoo fMRI, was that what it was called? Voodoo circularity. Voodoo circularity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, different w ways to avoid this. Uh, in many cases, this was not really done. Um, if you look very closely at the uh, at the studies, um, every couple of years there's some major controversy in fMRI, and sometimes it's real and sometimes it's not. Uh, but so w w you want to avoid double dipping. Uh, you want to make sure your statistics are valid. So one way to do this is use ROIs from independent data sets, from from previous studies, uh, from atlas regions, from set up a locator task, set, or just split your samples uh, so you can do it from other subjects. This was done uh, with AFNI. Uh, one way to do it with a locator task is shown down here. So you can, you can take the transformations from, from one data set and apply it to your, to your, from your locator task to your task data set. And here's the uh, command you might use for that. And that's it.